Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of The Bench Mob ENT, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. Y'all have seen this face before, but for those that have not seen this face, I call it Tally. You see the name? I, we we cool like that. I could call her Tally. So yeah. Tally in the building tonight, Tennessee State University shortstop, rapper, musician, artist, dancer, very, very talented, wears many different hats, family to us over here at the Bench Mob. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm very good. Thank you for having me back. I've been excited. <laughs> it's, it's been a while well, since last time, so. It's <laughs> been a while, and it's been a process to get it to happen, but I'm glad we yeah. finally did it. Now, before we get started, you already know the rules. Hit the subscribe button, mm-hmm. comment, like, and share it. You can share it with your uncle, your dog, your cat, your baby moms. We don't care if you're talking to your baby moms or not. Share it <laughs> with her. It's great content. We want to educate the algorithm of the great content because, you know, we ain't trying to be here for a good time. We're trying to be here for a long time. That's how we doing it. You are at Tennessee State University now. Yes, I am. What was your motivation to keep playing softball, and why did you choose Tennessee State University? So keep playing pretty much is you only get a certain amount of years of um, college eligibility. And so, you know, COVID blessed me with an extra year. And they called me and was like, do you want to come back? And I said, of course, why not? Especially because last year was my first year at Tennessee, and I loved it. I loved the team. I love the coaches. I love the program and where they're trying to go. So being asked to come back was like a blessing. Like, why not take the opportunity? Um, and why Tennessee? I wanted to go to HBCU so bad. I wish I knew more about HBCUs uh, after high school, but I feel like I didn't, especially like, you know, in my sport, I just was like not thinking about it. But after going, you know, through University of New Haven, graduating there, I was like, I want something different. And I wanted to be, you know, kind of more in the South so I could just, you know, experience it. And I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> I wish I went from the jump. But, yeah, I love it. I love it down here. I love so it. For making that decision, because I remember on the episode we had you on before, you mentioned HBCUs and how you kind of wanted to go to one. I know. Dope that you actually took that opportunity, because people say it. And yeah. then the opportunity, they be, ah, you know, yeah. I don't want to do it. So shout yeah. out to you. I'm on, we talked about it before. I'm on the same page. Like, I wish I did HBCU experience. Mm-hmm. Your family is more embracing. My mom was not trying to let me go. <laughs> no, I know. My mom was trying to push me right after high school. But I was like, no, like, I'm cool. Like, wherever they, you know. But they had emailed me um, my senior year of, New Haven because of COVID. And I was just like, you know what? I want to take the opportunity to go. And why not? It's Tennessee. I'm right in Nashville. This is a music hub. You know, even though it's country music, it's still a music hub. It's still a different, you know, scene. And I love it. I'm glad that I did. I went down there last last year for a work convention. Mm-hmm. I was like, Nashville pretty yeah. <laughs> it's lit. It's pretty lit. It's pretty lit down there. It's pretty okay. cool. It's like, to us, it's like, it's like, it's just a country New York, like really. That's a great way to explain. It's really, just That's a country a New York. Great way to explain it, because downtown where everything is at. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically it's mini New York, essentially. Yeah. Mini New York. It's a lot going on down there. Yeah. Good food, a lot of good music. Now, for you, you mentioned it though. You're at the HBCU. How has your HBCU experience been? Is it everything that you thought it would be, or more? Um, definitely everything and more. I just, it's, I, like, you don't think it would be so different because, again, it still is just college and, you know, everybody's here to get their degree. But just being around the people that I'm around, being around my people, around my culture and seeing, you know, the faces that, you know, like I have in my household is, is way different than, you know, um, kind of like our town or like, you know, kind of like, you know, the general, like, public school kind of thing. So, it's just crazy, and everybody has something. Like everybody is wanting to be somebody. Everybody has like, I'm a photographer, or I'm a rapper, or I'm I play basketball, or I do this, and they're so set on it, and I love that. It's so like passionate, and everybody is full of love. So like, they might be where like, oh yeah, I do photography. Oh, you're an artist. Oh, we should work. We should work together. And everybody's so nice down here. That's the only difference. The South, everybody's so nice. 
Ah, uh, Jersey, New York. I don't know why we're so mean. I don't know what it is. Like we have great people, but until we break down that wall, everybody in the South is so so much nicer. Every time I go down there, it's a complete difference. It was a video that came out like two years ago on I think Jimmy Fallon show, and it came out like the statistics like all of America views New Jersey, New York, and Cali as some of the rudest people <laughs> in the world. And us being from New Jersey. <laughs> no, it's so sad. It's like, it's true, but it's not true, if that makes sense. It's like, if you're from there, you don't think that. But when you actually go other places, everybody is so nice. Exactly. Like, you're it, just like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> It was bad because it was a video where people were just walking around asking the time. And you know, right. Jersey, you, you, know right. you ain't got a phone. You ain't right. got a phone. Like, <laughs> And they show it in the South. They show other places like, oh, yeah, it's 2 o'clock. Just something that simple. Like, Everybody's just taking their time answering the question. Like, it's something that simple. We, right. New Jersey, New York, we so sarcastic, too. It's, yeah. What? what you mean? You, never, you can never be serious. <laughs> now, for you, outside of the courteous and the manners and everything, what was, like, your biggest surprise going down to Tennessee and living there now? Um, Like I said, honestly, I think I picked the school because when I came for my tour, it really just felt like home. Like, honestly, being in Nashville, I guess, being in the city, um, even though I'm in Tennessee, it still feels like Jersey, low-key. Like, it just feels like a suburban town with a city in it, and I'm kind of just used to that. So it didn't feel like I was, like, in the middle of, like, Kansas and, like, there's just cows and stuff everywhere, which I know there's probably parts of Tennessee, but where I'm at, it just it felt like home. It just felt like a second home to me, and that's really what this feels like. So with that, right, what has been the favorite thing you can say of being in Nashville? What's your favorite thing about it? My favorite? Um... I'll say the people, the culture, just because, like, everybody's nice. Everybody's so willing to, you know, help in the sense of, like, depending on what they do and what their craft is, they'll help you, like, like, oh, we should work together. We should do this. We should do that, which I feel like back home there isn't a lot of that, which is kind of sad. But, yeah. Um, and how close I feel like because I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of the country, how close kind of everything else is. So, like, I'm only four hours away from Atlanta. So, like, that's another city that I visit a lot now. Um, but, yeah, I would just say how, like, kind of – it's, like, out the way but still in the mix. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, when I went on a work trip, I definitely was considering, like, if I could have got a rental, I was going to drive down to Atlanta. Like, yeah. It's like you get a little bit of everything, kind of. Yeah, for sure. Now, you you mentioned, right, you mentioned, like, oh, yeah, if I'm a photographer, I'm an artist, work with you. For those mm. who do not know, you're in school for what and what's your thing that you know you able to communicate with people like yo i do this right so okay so university of new haven graduated with my um, bachelor's in music and sound recording and then i just got my master's in general business and right now i was working on a certificate in um, executive leadership and administration but of course when i finish school i'm gonna do um pursue music full-time for sure um, you know, I've been making music for a very long time, and it's very um, past due. But this year, um, definitely be dropping a lot more music. Now, the business side, you got that just so it can couple with the music, so you know how yeah. to get yourself in the rooms. Right. So I was like, well, when in doubt, you know, music industry, you know, it's up and down. You never know what happens. So I figured business degree would go in hand with my music degree just because if I needed to work with a corporation I could not have that side or even if it was just for myself or another artist like I know at least how things are supposed to go people aren't going to try and just blindside me I don't know what's what um and then I'm taking like commercial law music um classes too so even like music industry classes so it's not just you know straight business it's also music business stuff as well that some people just when they get into the, you know, music stuff, they just kind of go into it blind. And that's when you try to figure everything out at the same time. You make mistakes, but I'd rather try and not make those mistakes and just, you know. Now, for you, I, I always ask people that are in music, that create music, that are artists, 
what's your stance on and what's your goal of independent or signing to a label? You've been making music for a while. What would you lean towards more? Because I've heard both sides of it. You know, there's some pros right. and thoughts. So for you, where do you stand in that independent or signing to a label debate? Um, I feel like, you know, like you said, it's definitely pros and cons to both. Um, for right now, I'm definitely still rooting for the independent side. Um, and I guess until I guess until I cross that line of like, oh, there's a record label on the table, you know, maybe. But at that at that point, I feel like you already got their attention, so why not just keep going by oh. yourself anyway? Because really, all I feel like, well, at least for me and the classes that I learned, that record labels all they do is really front up the money. Um, and that back then you kind of needed them to get you know radio play and distribute albums and this kind of third. But now we got social media, you don't need nobody for nothing but a camera to be quite honest with you. So it's like, really, if you just got the right people with you um, to promote, promote your stuff, you can really do anything by, like by yourself. So yeah. I think, think, I think uh, independence was the way I'm gonna go. I rock independent, I like it. Um, Cause there's too many stories that you hear of people getting messed up doing the label. Yeah. Especially they again, it's, it's, a, it's a business, it's a money thing. So like, if you're doing it just for, you know, I enjoy making music, I want content that people have and can hear to just enjoy, you know, what it is that I do or my feelings or my life. The business side of it is them is not, nah, I need more of this. I'm trying to pull every single dollar out of you. And that kind of, it kind of takes the fun away from it. And that's the one thing I, I would never want. Like, I just want it to be where I enjoy what I do every day. And I'm doing it because I can, not doing it because I got to pay my rent and I got to do this because the record label is going to drop me. And that. That's too much stress. Definitely. I, I hear it all the time where you, you've you seen the interviews. Everybody's seen the interviews where it's the, their favorite musician is like, I don't really love it no more, but I owe the label more albums. Mm -hmm. Why they sound, sound different. Right. People want this. This is what they saying. Mm -hmm. For you, right? Because, like you said, it is a business. On the, if you, you know, going with the independent side, though, yeah. for you, how do you balance that? Of, I do want to try to produce some type of income from this, but I also want to not lose my artistry and who I am and what my sound is. Um, I think that just comes from being passionate in what you do and like seeing what it is that you want out of whatever it is that you do. So I know, like for me, I feel like taking my athletic drive, my passion, my ability, all that stuff, and put it into my music where I just want to put something out that represents me to my fullest. And that's something that I enjoy and that hopefully that they enjoy. And at the end of the day, if I love it, I'm gonna put it out there. So, um, and just sticking with it, just being consistent enough to have enough music where people are like, mm, I might not like this song, but ooh, I like this one, or you know what I'm saying? So just have enough on the table for someone to enjoy it and then hopefully, you know, make a buck or two <laughs> out of it, you know. For you, do you, like, how do you make sure that you stay in the mental uh, mental space, being that you're in a field where opinions of people kind of matter on some level? Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that out and keep your mental, like if somebody, you're putting out songs like, yo, I don't really like it, but you like it. Right. Like, how do you balance that out and keep your mental like, all right, this needs to change or nah, they just hate it. Like, how do you balance it all out in, in that field? Um, honestly, I feel like that might have been the one reason why I waited so long to put out certain music or the one reason why I waited so long to even say like, to probably be like, oh, like, no, I make music. Cause some people will like shy from it and like, Cause then people take it as, oh, it's a hobby or like, you're not serious or you're never blow up. But like, no, if you're passionate about it, you should have the confidence in it to be like, no, this is what I do and I love it. And um, that opinion part, I mean, you really just, you can't care. Like you really cannot care. No, I feel like no matter what it is that you do, like I know with me, at least with sports, it probably helped mm -hmm. where I always felt like I was the underdog. I was always somebody who people were just kind of like, mm, you know, especially where I wanted to go. Like, I always wanted to go to a big school for softball. Like, I always wanted to be on TV, this time, the third. And so 
when I did have to like walk on to New Haven and um, you know, kind of like fight for my spot to be like, no, like I'm a great athlete, like I'm a great softball player, and then prove myself there. And then even being able to, you know, now come to a D1 school that gets ESPN play, like that's a whole full, you know, full moment for me. But at the same time, it's still like I'm hungry. Like I've always been like, I want more, like I want this. And like, I can't continue to care about like how people see me. Because at the end of the day, you could always, you're always just doing your best. Like everybody's always just doing their best. Even if it's something like, Man, like we could talk about Nikki putting out that that nonsense. You feel me? But at the end of the day, she's still just she just doing what she know best. Like she just doing at the end of the day, she just felt like just something that I want to do. I'm, I'm gonna put it out. I don't care. And at the end of the day, that's what you really have to do. Like whether some people see it as arrogance or cockiness, that really does bring people to the top sometimes. Like that just I don't care what anybody has to say. Mindset, whether it's good or bad, whether the opinions are you know good or bad. But yeah. Nah, that definitely is a factor, especially, you know, you build, you build a fan base and a community. Mm -hmm. Like you said, <laughs> you get to a certain point. A lot of people said, nah, I wasn't rocking with that Nicki Minaj song. Right. Like, a lot of people that said I was rocking with it. Exactly. So you never know until you just do it at the end of the day. So why not take the chance? Hey. You already know that's how it's supposed to be. And it's great that you take that mentality from the sports aspect. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier that you don't see it often up here in the tri-state area, you see it down there more. The actual willingness to collaborate versus the mindset people like, I'm always competing with you. I'm always, I'm going to compete. I got to be better than, I got to be better than this. Next. Oh, they dropped the song today. I'm about to drop too. Like, Right. Which, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's a, maybe it's a good and bad thing, at least from where we're from. Maybe it's a good thing in the sense of like, because it's so big and so densely populated that if you're trying to be somebody, you have to have that hunger. You can't always be super, you know, relaxed. Whereas in like Nashville, like I feel like if you have a little clout, everybody's going to know you rather than in New York. There's like so many rappers and so many people where I'm just like, I've never heard you before. But like, you know, like you really have to keep having that anger, um, that hunger. Um, but yeah. So how, how do you, like the, I was kind of leading to like, so how do you balance that? Cause if you're any, pretty much any field, sports, music, mm -hmm. or if you're trying to be a lawyer in the tri-state area, everybody in the world is trying to come over here to get a job in this area. Right but you in Nashville and it's more of a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. You bounce it, especially being that you're going to come back home. How mm -hmm. do you balance deciphering and discerning who do I collaborate with and who do mm -hmm. I say, oh, no, nah, I'm about to, I'm, I'm going to kill you. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I feel like collaboration just comes from like a feeling of like what it is, what kind of music they make um, or what it is that they do whether that be like photography or like graphics or something like that. So if it's something that I'm okay with having my name attached to, then that's yeah. something that I can, I can rock with no matter what it is. Like, even if it was like an NIL deal for like softball, like if it was makeup, I am i don't wear makeup. So I can't attach my name to that, you know what I'm saying? But if it was something else where it was like a Nike, whatever, I could do that because I wear Nike. So it's like, it, I feel like it's the same way with collaborating with, um, you know, content creators, artists, whatever that may be, and balancing the fact of, okay, we make music together and that's cool and that could always help me or it could, I mean, just leave me where I'm at, but I feel like it could always help you because they might have a fan base that you don't have. Now that none, now those people know your name, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it really just depends on, you know, if you're okay with having your name attached to that at the end of the day. Yeah, I think that's a good point, too. Like, I know you heard the debates and whatnot with the Drake album that came out. Everybody was saying that J. Cole came on his song and wiped the floor with him. He was walking all over the beat, killed him. So that's kind of the same mindset you're saying. Like, yo, if I, if I collaborate with somebody, if I do good and I do what I know I'm able to do, that's right. another fan base now that gets to hear you as well. Especially yeah. if you have, um, you know, people that, are like two different 
I feel like, okay, people that probably listen to like Rod Wave don't listen to Drake probably. So it's like, okay, now if they do a song together, that's two fan, different fan bases listening to like, wow, this is beautiful music right here. And now, you know, your fan base got even stronger. So it's really hit or miss, but you never know until you do it. So like, why not? As long as it's something that you're okay with having your name. Um, How would you describe your music? Uh, definitely melodic, melodic rap. I'm gonna always say that because um, I be trying to sing even though I can't sing. <laughs> but melodic rap for sure. Um, R and B has my has my you know has my heart for real. Um, but I do like I like writing raps like rap rap. So like yes, it's gonna sound good, but it's gonna be bars in there, you know. So. For you, who were some of your musical inspirations uh, growing up? Ooh, so my mom always had Maxwell playing in the car. So him for sure. That's probably why I think I could sing. <laughs> um, Michael Jackson, of course. Him just being an entertainer, like all around, um, dancing and all that stuff. Um, which, then, which you do, by the way, for those that don't know, which you do. I do, do, I do do that. It'd be low key sometimes now too. So it's kind of funny when like I'll post a TikTok and people are like, "Oh, you can actually dance," and it's like, "Oh yeah, I just kind of thought everybody knew that." But <laughs> he's been doing that. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's because I'm in a different state, so I be forget. Oh, like, true, 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 true. Um, let me think. Oh, um, I mean, I listen to a lot of Drake too, so I would say his verse versatility just because he's willing to like you know pretty much put out whatever he started the whole he made uk rap popular I, i'm gonna say that right now he definitely did he made it mainstream because nobody was listening to that and so he hopped on some and he started rapping like them and they're like whoa this is different um and who else and um i'm gonna say i'm gonna say nikki too though just because of her grit and her like her I don't care mentality of yeah I'm a female rapper but I'm eat all y'all up. And that's I think that's really kind of where I'm at. <laughs> that's dope. Would you would you consider being that you know music and you've listened to all types of music growing up from the beginning to now, would you consider her as like the goat for female rappers? I'm always gonna say yes. I'm a barb. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a barb to the core. She does some nonsense, but I'm still a barb. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I definitely do. I feel like you know she. I mean, of course, there's other people like you know Queen Latifah and um, Rhapsody and all those people too. Um, but I think her making it mainstream and just that I don't care. And being up there with Lil Wayne and Drake and, you know, being able to get on people's features and literally make it her song. Like, I feel like her features are better than half the songs that, like, she puts out her albums low-key. Like, I'd be like, yo, every every feature that she really, like, used to have back, I'd be like, yo, just give her the song at that point. Because she really ate y'all up. Like, she walked on Monster when that came out. Boy, there were, like, seven people on there. And she was the last verse. <laughs> and she just cleaned everybody. But yeah, I'm going to still put her up there on the, on the list for sure. Now, before we transition to the fourth quarter segment, you mentioned MJ. And something came out today that I wanted to get your opinion on. Uh, Jalen Rose tweeted today that after the Super Bowl performance, that Usher is our modern day version, the closest person to Michael Jackson your thoughts on that and is there anybody that you see that is the closest version to mj usher that that might have been a stretch i ain't gonna lie. i love usher i do and yes he can dance and sing but damn everybody that dances and sing is not michael jackson um <laughs> no i'm not i'm wholeheartedly gonna say this i the closest person i think that really would have done that is chris brown and I think his little incident that happened back in the day definitely is pulling on why he can't get all the way up there, um, even though, you know, that was in the past. But still, I think he, if that never happened, he 
he would have been the closest thing to it for sure. And I get that, you know, numbers and streams are different. So like Drake is up there with MJ, but I feel like that's still two different categories. Um, Glad and you if, said. Anything, if anything, shoot, Beyonce up there, <laughs> like she be selling out everywhere. So yeah, as per, as a performer, I feel like Beyonce is up there and, but the closest thing I would say would have been Chris Brown. I can, I've been saying it for years. If he ain't do that whole, if that Rihanna situation did not happen. Yeah, he would be a completely different artist for sure. The trajectory of where he was going. Yeah. And then the performance aspect too. Yeah. Nah. That's yeah. the closest we've seen that. I, I get it. Usher had a great little Super Bowl and all that. Cool. But let's not forget Breezy. But yeah, we Breezy. can't. Can't get a Super Bowl? Yeah, that that would be insane. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I think y'all saw something with us. Breezy at a Super Bowl would have been different. Would have been insane. But you, I don't think he ever gonna get that opportunity. Maybe no. with Jay Z and Beyonce working on the business side of the NFL, maybe they could. Maybe. They could ease that one in there, you know. Maybe we'll see it in a couple of years, but who knows? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Now we you we ask everybody what's their favorite thing to eat, but you already been on the show, so we had to switch it up. Where's your favorite place to eat? Out here. Out there. My favorite place to eat. Ooh, that's a hard question. Cause I'm still biased. I still say food in Jersey and New York is way better. <laughs> um let me see. My favorite place to eat out here. It might be basic though, only because, um, well, I guess New York just got one, but they got canes out here. <laughs> they got stuff that we don't got. So, like canes and like Zaxby's. I like eating over there. Um, and they got little, they got good pokey shops, like the sushi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got, they got some fresh ones over here too. So, I, I like that. I still go to the one in Nashville, hands down, because I don't know if you've been home to see it. Mm. Um, they got it in the middle of uh, Times Square, which is probably the worst yeah. yeah, no, I saw it this summer. I walked right past it. That line looked like it would have been two hours long. I'm like, y'all chose the... Right. When I go back to school, I, I already know what's up. <laughs> Who's on your Mount Rushmore of musical artists? Your, your personal top four. Top four? Like, all time? Or, like, who I'm listening to right now? All time. Your, your favorite top four. Mm, this question is always hard because it always changes. But okay, Michael Jackson, for sure. Drake, for sure. Um, I'm gonna put SZA up there because R&B. I feel like she she did that. Um, dang, I got two more, don't I? Huh. That's the question is always so hard. I'm gonna say J. Cole. I do I do listen to J. Cole a lot. I definitely just went on that tour and it was a great, it was a great concert. <laughs> um and last one. I don't know. It's kind of hard. I always have like a top four, but five is kind of it's always like a stretch for me. <laughs> for you completely Whatever comes to mind, two things in your opinion that are, that are overrated. 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 The train. When I'm back home, I hate taking the train. I hate it. I know that it's supposed to be convenient and I, I hate it. I hate taking the train. I hate taking the subway. I really do. I will drive from Jersey to New York no matter anytime I go and pay $60 to park somewhere. I swear, and I'll walk everywhere else. I hate the train. It's so inconvenient. Like, yes, they're supposed to run, like the subway runs every what, like 10 minutes or something like that. And then the train runs every 30. But one, one rail has to break down, that's it. That's all it takes. And now it takes you a whole two, three hours to even get to the city if you even can go anymore. Like, no, I'm not doing that. That's normal. I'm the same way. I'm driving to New York. I'm driving every time. Time. Because every... then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I don't want to exactly. wait on no train. I don't want to wait on no Man. delays. 
Exactly. When I'm ready to go, I want to go. And because if you go to New York, nine times out of 10, you could end up finding yourself getting into something else. And I'm not taking another two, three trains to get to the next borough. Exactly. Or right. Subway. Much is way too much. And so it's because, like, being in a different state and in the South, there's no easy pass out here. I could just drive around for free. <laughs> Driving around in my own state, I already got to pay, like, a million dollars just to get from here and there. Like, it's ridiculous. It's, it's nasty work. The amount of tolls we got now, just New Jersey alone, is nasty work. Your three favorite moments of your softball career. Thus far, because I know you're finishing off now, but thus far. Um, you said my three favorite moments of my softball career. Okay, I'm gonna say hitting my first D1 home run last year in our home field because our field is huge for I don't know what reason, but it's ginormous. <laughs> um, and then what else? Honestly, just coming into TSU. Because, uh, again, that was like a full circle moment for me. And um, then the third one would definitely be playing the University of Texas last year. That would probably be the biggest stage that I played on. And um, it was very surreal. Like, I know my parents were watching on, like, Long, um, Longhorn Network, all that stuff. My dad was like, wow, you look taller on TV. And, like, it's just so cool because, I mean, that's something, like, like, you grow up watching, like, people just do that. And you never thought that you'd actually be there until so you're, like, there. And like they got the jumbotron, and you're like standing in the box, and you're just looking at yourself on the screen, like this is insane. Like the crowd is behind you. It's like such a big like stage, but at the same time, it's like wow, like you really got there, especially because I didn't think I was gonna get there. Two more. If a documentary was made about your life, mm. what would be the title of it. Ooh. Honestly, easily, probably just Tally Time. It's, it's always Tally Time. <laughs> Why would you call it Tally Time? Um, it's just, I mean, for me, like, Tally Time just means, like, I'm on go. Like, I just have the mindset of just, you know, whatever it is I say that I'm going to do, I go and do it. Like, I really, like, sit there and try and figure out no matter how hard, how long, how many redirects um yeah it's hard time it's just like let's go let's go get it like i'm after it last one again we thank you for hopping on with us taking time out your schedule five people dead or alive five people dead or alive. you would want a feature from mm. okay michael jackson um, Drake, um, Travis Scott, that would be a good one. That would be fire, I feel like. Um, SZA and Steve Lacey. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like that five right there. The internet, Sid from the internet. I like her too. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I like that list right there. Hey, you already know the vibes. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Bench mob, we out. Peace.